This little button cactus is so tiny and unassuming, you'd never guess it's a plant so steeped in controversy. Say hello to peyote. Hey, I'm Tasha the Amazon. You're watching Floral Logic. Today we're talking about peyote, a tiny cactus that's caused quite a stir. These small but mighty plants are native to Mexico and southwestern Texas and are usually found in desert scrubland. Peyote grows close to the ground, either on its own or in small clumps. Peyote is a Spanish word derived from the Aztec word for caterpillar cocoon. Its scientific name is Lophophora williamsii. The Latin Lophophora means crest bearing, which refers to the tufts of trichomes that grow out of the plant's tubercles, or the little hairy things coming out of the bumpy parts. Peyote open themselves to the sun during the day and produce their flowers sporadically. The flowers are generally pink, white, or yellowish, and eventually become edible pink berries. The flowers also have thigmatactic anthers. That means when the anther is touched, it curls over and deposits its pollen. Most peyote grow underground, and only their tops, called buttons, are visible. That's why they're called button cactuses. The plants grow just two to seven centimeters above ground and about four to 12 centimeters across. But they're not just small, they're also super slow. Cultivated peyote usually takes between three and 10 years to mature from seed to flowering age. And in the wild, they're even more sluggish. Some wild peyote take up to 30 years to mature, like humans. On the plus side, they live a really long time. But how exactly do they survive? Well, as a cactus, their metabolism is designed to preserve what little water they get. Their extremely thick stems also help with water retention, and they don't have to worry about the sun evaporating all the water on their big leaves because peyotes don't have leaves. Let's get into the reason peyote is so famous. This one little plant is filled with psychoactive alkaloids growing in its tissue, specifically mescaline. Mescaline is a naturally occurring psychedelic that can cause hallucinations when ingested. Yeah. In peyote, it's so powerful that in many countries, ingesting the plant is illegal. But tripping people out was never peyote's intention, as far as we know. The reason it has such high levels of alkaloids is because it makes them taste terrible. And why would you want to taste terrible? So animals don't eat you. One bite of that bitter peyote and herbivores are like, no thank you. It's their defense mechanism, which means no need for spiky spines. Peyote's history is as wild as the hallucinations it creates. Okay, maybe not that wild, but still really interesting. Archaeologists believe peyote has been used by indigenous North Americans in Mexico for almost 6,000 years. As recently as 2,000 years ago, it was traded between tribes and used for medicinal purposes. They call it the sacred medicine and use it to treat toothaches, childbirth pain, arthritis, blindness, and even outbreaks of cholera. But it wasn't until the 1880s that indigenous people started holding peyote ceremonies these were religious rituals to celebrate special occasions, heal the sick, and connect with spirits. The ceremonies were different for every tribe, but generally they'd last overnight and include singing, drumming, and dancing around a fire. Soon, the US government, along with prohibitionists and Christian missionaries, tried to ban the peyote rituals. They said they were concerned about the plant's psychoactive effects and insisted it was deadly and addictive. So in an effort to protect themselves and their beliefs, peyote users united and created the Native American church. Fast forward to 1970, when the United States government officially made peyote an illegal substance. The Native American church was given religious exemption, meaning they're allowed to legally purchase and consume it without penalty, as long as it's being used for, and I quote, bona fide religious ceremonies. But that's just America. Peyote laws are different all over the world. Obviously, people aren't just using peyote for religious purposes. Many want to try it recreationally. So when they find it in the desert, they poach it. All of this human interference means that the peyote population has become a vulnerable species. Not quite endangered, but it's certainly on its way. Their numbers are also declining because of habitat destruction and unsustainable harvesting practices. In Mexico, the cactus is protected under federal law, but still threatened by silver mining in the region where it grows. Peyote preservationists are trying to get the American government to recognize it as an endangered species and protect it with conservation laws. In the meantime, stay strong, little buddy. Peyote doesn't let up. <laughs> Starting to see lightning flashes out of the corner of my eye. That's a sign that I'm really loaded. 
So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. See ya. Time's a charm, third time's a charm. Eat my arm, third time's a charm. <sighs> These were religious rituals meant to connect. Why? Why? <gasps> Give me some peyote over here. <laughs> Not quite endangered, but certainly on its way. No, one more. I forgot how to talk. <laughs> ah!